a new day today. Yeah, it is the one that I made up. I'm not a counterfeit. We trust me, glad in it. It's the life you're giving. Why not trust the process? It's the life I'm living. I'ma stop my nonsense. That's what I'm on. Yeah, walking with my gun, I'm feeling strong.
Always in the same places, yeah. Yeah. When I'm feeling low, I'm feeling down, yeah. When I don't want no one else around, yeah. Yeah, when all I do is look around and frown, yeah. Yeah, I got this feeling lifts me up the ground, yeah. yeah. When I feel I'm drowning in my problems, yeah. When I can't find strength to go and solve it, yeah. Mm-hmm.
always in the same place yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
for your patience i love you i bless you all in the beautiful name of jesus and you guys are exactly correct if we had gifts in the chat the whole thing would get shut down okay <laughs> <laughs> hey mother i love you deeply i hope that we can um felicia made a commitment not to play too much tonight so we should be okay and um we don't have any scriptures any scriptures that are going to choke choke anybody up today now you, I started it. Now I will tell you this though. I listen. You know I listen back to every teaching immediately afterwards. I would listen to it and I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I was in the bed and I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and then Brando in the telegram saying, "Um, Ledger has it." <laughs> he said, "Legend, Ledger has it." Okay, I got you. All right, listen. Look, if y'all can hear me well, put a thumbs up in the chat. Quentin, let me know if that's better. That way, it'll be well. Adrian, I was laughing too, so I went back and listened to the teacher, and I I listened. So I knew it wasn't it wasn't like a jab at John because I said John, I read this today and it attacked me. Don't. It was like the Lord when he spoke to Cain. Listen, Cain, I'm warning you now. <laughs> Sin is at your door. Don't let it overtake you. <laughs> that was how I read that scripture. Like John, I'm warning you now. Hey, Mary Soul, I love you. John Owens, bless you. Olu, Farrah Brando. My Adrian, well, Justin, Eve, please don't make it personal. <laughs> Clarence, Olu, my big sister, Elder Shea, I love you. Quentin, um, Nadij, I hope I said it right. If I didn't, please forgive me. It's a beautiful name. I know that. Your name is beautiful. Kevin, I love you, man of God. Obadiah, MG, Marva S., what's going on, man of God? Hey, Alicia. So you got right. Oh, hey, amen. I, I try to read things like they're pronounced. I love you more, my patience. I love you more. So yeah, I would listen. I listened back to the teaching, and I I actually was like, you tripped up every time I tripped up when I read it. Like I remember myself reading it. And I was like, yeah, in Abimelech. <laughs> and I was fine until Carl said, "Fight back, John. Fight back." <laughs> So God has a God has a unique way of using different facets to knit our hearts together. Yeah. He used glory to knit our hearts together. He also uses joy to knit our hearts together. God also can use sorrow to knit hearts together. There's different things. So you know that's why I wasn't it wasn't too bad of a thing. It was just we couldn't overcome that hill after that scripture. Like there was no coming back from it. But it was good. God gave us a grace and He'll continue to give us grace now. I will say this um, with the school of life I'm almost certain like I think we only got like no spaces left because it's in the same location and Sean has already added 10 people with him <laughs> like that but I blame Sean huh <laughs> what'd you say so I said I like that yeah <laughs> this show He literally added, like, he was like, I got 10 people with me, and the others are bringing, Dr. A just bringing her brother and her sister-in-law. So, you know, just, I think we're pretty much, like, right there. We'll still probably keep running promotions around it, but I think we pretty much locked in that, you know, our, our crew will be there, and then we'll have a, a, few new, a few new people with us. But it'd be a good time, so start preparing your hearts. Get your funds together. Whatever you got to do, you know you guys know what was necessary for that. So we're gonna start handling that and getting those things ready. And as Felicia said, you want to come uh, talk to them for a second? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I liked it when she when she came over there. Right. <laughs> She's trying to behave tonight, but um, just get get your affairs in order. 
whatever you need to get settled, go ahead and take care of that. And I'm going to try to see if we can finish quick tonight. Because tomorrow I'm coming with Cat Williams Energy. So I said, let's uh, let's see if we good. If you know, you know. So I said, let's um, <laughs> let, I am. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to finish at a decent, at, uh, uh, a rather quick time. Because what I do want to do, I want. I want my wife and I to get some rest because we haven't. Uh, we really haven't slept in a while. So I would like us to get some rest. So, but tomorrow. I'm going to be on one. I'm just letting you know now. I said, when Julie make whatever video going to be for tomorrow, we're going to put the Cat Williams music over top of it. <laughs> just so people know what type of time we're on. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? See, hold on, I'll show y'all. had the spirit of truth working in him. <laughs> That's crazy. He did. This house gonna be right. Mm -hmm. They know I'm coming. I know they gonna be there, and they know I'm gonna do the best job I can possibly do. Oh, That's gonna be my little my little drive for a while. Y'all know I'm coming, <laughs> cause y'all know I'll be late. <laughs> but y'all know I'm gonna do the best job <laughs> I can possibly do <laughs> when I get there. <laughs> I'm just telling you now. If you're lurking, if you're lurking, this might not be the one for you. <laughs> if you're lurking, what he said, John John? Because when we line up, boy boy, <laughs> you know what I'm he was going in. I said, oh, he on something. He on that dimension. He on something. So, yeah, I said I wanted to rest today because tomorrow we bring Cat William Bobs. So, I knew y'all would like that a little bit. <laughs> that shows that karma y'all are. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm messing. Now, like I said, we got a few minutes, so let's kind of get get going. But tonight we're going to be talking about having a calm spirit. I figure we just laugh a little bit so that we can just be settled, right? Now, a calm spirit doesn't mean that you're not jovial. A calm spirit doesn't even mean that someone's not loud because. A lot of times people equate calm with quiet. And calm doesn't necessarily mean quiet. Calmness isn't the absence of noise. Calmness is not the absence of noise because Jesus, excuse me, not Jesus, but God in his nature is always settled, yet how he expresses himself is different. How he expresses himself is different, yet he is fully settled in all of his ways. So calmness does not equate to quiet, although being quiet and not just being quiet by speech, but the nature of quietness is a big portion, a big portion or a big part of being calm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The nature of it is a big portion of being calm. Now, yesterday I, I talked a little bit and we'll go deeper into it in the future about man being a, uh, man being a location. I think uh, some of y'all were blessed by that. Yo, the Antoine text me today. I said, you are a location. Yeah, so you give me language. <laughs> <laughs> I said, come on, somebody. <laughs> hey. Right. But, um, yeah, well, it was. I think that opens the people up to it. Like, hey, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. God has made you a location. <coughs> that way men can come unto him. You would be a location that when man looks for God, they come to you. That when men look for resources, they come to you. 
Yes. That when men look for aid, they come to you. That when men look for a word, they come to you. Why? Because you have become a location. And that city has resources. Right? That yes. city has resources very much so. Like when people come to our country because they're looking for resources, they're looking mm -hmm. for a better way of moving forward. You, you would be the same way. You, amen. You, you very much be the same way. Now, a big part of that, in order for a man to become a city, he has to be settled. He has to be settled. He has to be still. He has to be calm. He has to be quiet. And the fashion of it is that it takes great practice. It takes great practice to become a man of quietness. It takes great practice to become a man who's calm. And when I say man, I mean man and woman. Because life has everything it has to throw at us. And inside of that life, you have your children. Inside of that life, you have circumstances. Inside of that life, you have God knows what work. All, all, all the things happening, right? And all the things are biting or bidding to keep you away, keep you away from being a person with a calm spirit. All of the things are literally bidding to keep you away from being a person with a calm spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who spend more intimate time with me, you know, like, even if I get very passionate about something, there's not much that can shake me. Mm -hmm. And when I say shake me, I don't mean you're not moved in your emotions. <clears throat> because that's the flip side where people think where if somebody's calm, that they don't feel emotion about a thing. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying, right? Daniel went into the lion's and calm, although he was afraid. So that's the flip side that people don't understand. Daniel was afraid, yet he was calm, meaning settled. That should God slay me or should God raise me up, I trust him. You understand? Yeah. So I understand that, that whether he slay me or whether he raised me, I trust him. It doesn't change the fact that I have emotions and sentiments around it. She said, do we know what time the school of lights will be? So Friday evening, February 16th and 17th, Friday evening, we're going to start at like 6 p.m. 6.30, but you know we um, we had a CPT coming, so, but just be there because, you, you ask some people from last time, <laughs> just be there because if, you know, you might miss that window and the door's locked, so we'll start Friday at 6.30 is what I think we said, and then Saturday we're going to start at 10 a.m., and Friday night we're not going to be long just for the fact that everyone's traveling in and flying and all those things so that way people can rest so they can actually wake up for Saturday without it being like, oh man, I overslept. And then Saturday we'll just have a good time and be together and um, God will do whatever he reveals that he wants to do. Amen? Amen. So I uh, hope that answers your question. And I told them, I saw your message that you asked earlier. You have to send me a message personally on, um, on Instagram so I can see it. Now, the thing with the telegram is not anything personal, so I don't want people to feel rejected. I don't, and it's good that you asked that so we could just kind of do some housekeeping. I don't want anyone to feel rejected. Don't feel like you're not included in anything. With the telegram, now, I've, I have to have people, let me just say it like this. I have to surround or insulate myself with people who protect me also. And the reason being, I wear my heart on my sleeve towards all of God's people. So... Even if someone does me wrong, I'm still there for them. Now, nobody's done me wrong either. I'm just showing you an example, right? <laughs> My wife said, I would beg to differ. A lot of people actually do me wrong. You just, I just don't tell the stories of it. But even in that, I wear my heart on my sleeve in such a way that I allow people to just do whatever they want with it. God just wired me that way. Now, I have to move very carefully because this year, remember I told you I said God's going to give me the grace to teach about Enoch and Melchizedek. He told me who to teach that to. Remember I said, hey, that won't be public. Mm -hmm. Right? It won't be public. And the reason being, God told me who to teach that to. So part of my commission, what God gave me, was that I was to raise prophets, apostles, and spiritual men. Which means that I'm not called to everybody. However, everyone can, everybody can glean. That's why we have the YouTube. So, I mean, as of right now, I think there's like 70 teachings there. Because of all the stuff we made private, if we made the private stuff available, it'd be like a hundred something. Mm -hmm. By the time we're done, we're just kind of catching up on time. So by the time we're done this year, we'll look up, I think when we did the math, there'll be 200 teachings there publicly that you can access. And by the time we do 2025, 
being that the Lord does not return, they'll be filling like 400 to 500. Meaning that's the, the rate that we're increasing what God has given us to do. That's for everybody to receive. Everybody to receive. Now, I don't want you to feel left out because if you start from the beginning and go all the way to the end, you will find so much there that you actually realize you're not missing out on anything. You're not missing out on anything. Now, because of that, I say that to say I don't want people to feel rejected if they're not like invited to the telegram, all that stuff. Simply the telegram was a way for me to take the ability to dish out information to those whom God has called me to directly without having to send like mass text messages or have to send individual messages. And it's a way for them to garner fellowship together because God is knitting a group of people together for a certain work. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you have to ask yourself more than the telegram, has God drawn me to him? You understand? You have to ask yourself that. Has God given me to him? Because remember, there was all the school of the prophets, but there was only one person that was with Elijah. There was all the school of the prophets, yet there was only one person that was with Eli. You see? There was all the school of the prophets, there was only one person with Elisha. There were all the disciples, but there was only 12 that he drew close to call them apostles. So in light of those things, what I don't want you to do, and one, the other thing you have to realize is most people think they're ready. They're not ready to, they're not ready to actually steward what it looks like that God will put somebody a gift in your life and then you also have a pastor and other things like that. People are not really immature and can't handle that. Not only myself, but actual leaders. Since we're kind of going down that thing, let's just kind of deal with it. You have leaders who are not mature enough to handle that. They feel slighted if you receive something from somewhere else, not knowing it makes you better for where you are. Yeah. So the telegram simply was for those whom God has called me to. The YouTube platform gives us the ability to allow everyone to receive. But then there's a certain dynamic where there are certain people that God has called me to directly. And that's really what Telegram is for. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not, it's not a jab. It's not a rejection. It's not that. What you have to do is ask yourself the question, whom has God drawn me to? Jesus asked him that. Who do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Someone asked me that when they say, are you my spiritual father? I said, who do you say I am? I don't get to proclaim you as my own. Who do you say that I am? You'd be surprised. A lot of people's proclamations, they'll deny them in the future. So right now, this is cool. Revelation is cool right now. But in a few years, revelation won't be cool anymore. Prophecy is the thing right now. In a few years, prophecy won't be the thing. It may be evangelism next. I don't know what the next thing is going to be. But it goes through the disciples. Like casting devils out was the thing at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Right. But while the casting devil wave was being rolled, I was still saying the same things. I can, I was literally showing you, I said, man, let me see. I'll show you. I can show you better than I can tell you. I may have deleted it out of my phone since then. a certain video hold on now obviously you can't see it from that far but you can see right when I was showing someone I was showing some of the different books that I have that's the book where Jesus taught me about being a son of God and a son of man that's the book where God taught me about righteousness, unrighteousness, how he has our righteousness in. The other one on there, he taught me other things. I got books for days where all the things that God has taught me over the years when I would encounter them. That's what Telegram is for. When I start teaching people those things. Right? But those things that God gave me, he gave me for those who were called to me. 
You understand? So I, I just want to, it's not a diss, but I say that to say, not that Telegram, but those things, 10 years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago, Revelation wasn't popular back then. It wasn't popular to talk about the things that we talk about, how we tie things, that you, how we how, how we tie it together and stuff like that. It's just popular right now, right? But that stuff has been the same. I've been talking about Jesus from the Old Testament 10 years ago. I literally have a book where I can show you where the Lord came to me and he asked me, would you like to know how my going forth has been from everlasting to everlasting and from age to age? And I said, yes. And he said, open Genesis. And he took me from Genesis to Revelation, showed me every place where Jesus moved from beginning to end. Still talking that stuff. I remember when I was sharing it with people and they actually disagreed with me. Now, seven years later, they're preaching and saying the same things. Jesus was doing this, Jesus was doing that. But I remember when I had to withstand the scrutiny of someone trying to test that. Now, the scrutiny didn't bother me because I experienced a man, not a, not a teaching. Mm-hmm. So the scrutiny was like, I was like, that's a, you're trying to reason according to scripture. I'm reading according to a man. Jesus said that you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. But if you knew the gift of God, you would come to me. Yes. But I was never shaken or moved as they were trying to test my theories, quote unquote, because I had a calm spirit. So I could test when pe- I could stand strong because my spirit was what? Settled. <laughs> Where others may not have been able to withstand that. And then to hear someone preach something seven years later, and you're like, I remember you didn't say that. And I remember you sharing with my wife, I said, it doesn't matter. You remember that? I said, as long as they get it, that's all that matters. You heard me say to you, I said, no, the things that God gave me, you're supposed to go teach it. I don't even expect you to give me credit. I didn't want the person to give me credit. I said that, simply put, if they get it, the church is better. Mm-hmm. If they get it, the church is better. And I'm very aware that my overall view is about the church as a whole. Mm-hmm. I play a small part in that, so I'm committed to my small part and the people that I would touch in light of my small part. Hey, Amen. But what you're experiencing is phenomena, where it's cool right now. After a while, miracles ain't going to be cool. It's, it's, it's like whatever. Revelation ain't going to be cool. It's going to be the next thing. I don't know what the next thing may be. No. Nah. Because I'm already that. <laughs> yeah. She said deep mystics. I said, no, nah, I'm already that. <laughs> In the future... Yeah, in the future, that will be popular, too. Yeah. Meaning Godcraft. I haven't taught Godcraft yet, but just like you have witchcraft, you have Godcraft. Again, there are certain things Jesus said. There were things that I would love to teach you about. But John, you yourself, you are not ready to bear it. This is what he wrote to the Revelator, to the Beloved. There's things I want to tell you, but you yourself, you are not ready. If he said that to the one who walked with him, how much more so for us? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? How much more so for us? How much more so for us? Now, of course, we want, I can guarantee you when we start talking Godcraft, that'll be in person. It won't, <laughs> won't be a camera in sight, okay? <laughs> won't be a camera in sight. But you got to consider, they said about Jesus, they says, he is a glutton and a wine bibber. So how much more so you got to consider for all of us, and not all of us in this room, for all of us, meaning those who are actually living a life unto the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. If they said that about him, what do you think they're going to say about you? He said, if they crucified me, surely they will crucify you. If they drove me out of their cities, what would they do to you? Mm-hmm. So you just got to understand there's so many, there's so many moving parts to this thing. You understand? Mm-hmm. So backtracking back to Telegram, I wanted you to know that it's not personal. So I don't want people to feel rejected. But what you want, what you need to ask yourself the question, has God given me to this person? And I said that specifically. Has God given me to this person? Because remember, sons aren't born, they're given. Adam wasn't born, he was made. You understand? Adam was made a son, he wasn't born a son. 
and Jesus being the second Adam says what? For unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. God gives sons. So you have to ask yourself, who has God given me to? And if you can't say God has given me to Prophet Jason, don't feel slighted if I say, oh man, not this go around. Now I have to insulate myself now because I'm at the point where in order to protect what God is doing, I have to en enlist the services of my wife and Ashley and Julie and Janika because I would just let everybody in. But then in turn, the same people you let in are the same people that crucify you. And you don't, you don't mean, you, they, don't, they don't mean harm. But the men whom Jesus healed, the men whom he delivered, the men who he raised up from their sick beds were some of the same very men who said crucify him. Or some of the same men who said crucify him. Some of the very same people that he touched. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, man. If the government started knocking down the doors, I'm very aware of who would be like, hey, man, he right over there. So I have to also navigate with wisdom now also. And I hate to even have to, you have to do things like that. But just in light of where life has landed us, I have to navigate with wisdom also and navigate in a way that gives a little more caution than even personally I would like to. I like, me personally, if you know my heart, I let everybody have it. Especially those who are called to be prophets. Those who are called to be prophets, there's nothing I won't do. There's nothing, there's nothing I won't tell them. That's why I have to even restrain myself. That's a part of having a calm spirit. That's the part of having a calm spirit. Every young prophet's spirit is unsettled. And as they grow through the maturation process with the Lord Jesus, their spirits become calm. Their spirits become settled. I always know the young prophet. Their spirits are just all over the place. They want to talk about everything. They just can't. They just shh. And nothing wrong with that. Because I was there too. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's nothing wrong with that. But because my spirit has been settled, because my spirit has been calm, I know when it's time to give the information. Right? Because if I give you something before time, it can destroy you. <laughs> like teaching Godcraft. <laughs> if you give something before time, it'll destroy people. So it's nothing personal at all. Right? So just don't don't feel that way. Don't <laughs> diamond send me with my 101 questions. I love your questions. I don't mind. I just had to always make sure we could find time for them. <laughs> Right, I don't mind at all because God gave me. But you have to ask yourself when you start asking these questions, like, "Hey, I want to be a part of this or this and this." Who has God given me to? Mm -hmm. And if God has given you to somebody, it makes it easier for you not to rip yourself out of that person's life. Mm -hmm. Adam was the first son. He was not born; he was made. Jesus says. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. God gives sons. Amen. Amen. Sons aren't born, they're made. Sons aren't born, they're given. And all that's God's doing and God's choosing at his sovereignty. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Aya, 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 Aya. But uh, <laughs> but Aya, that wasn't personal to you. I'm just making a general address. And I hope that helps. <laughs> I hope that helps and I hope that kind of clarifies. But send me a DM and let's talk. I did turn into a song, AI. Well, there goes that for that being a short lesson, huh? Now, in light of 
with having a calm spirit, one of the things that you have to practice is setting a guard over your mouth. Okay? In order to have a calm spirit, you have to have control over your lips. You have to have control over your lips. My wife will tell you sometimes, if I'm very, 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 very upset, I will not speak about certain things. Because I'm aware what could come out of my mouth and the damage that it can do. I'm also aware of the blessings and the good things that it could do. You understand what I'm saying? But my calm spirit is what allows me to have the ability to restrain myself. When I was younger, I didn't have a calm spirit. So I didn't have the ability to restrain myself. I remember when the channel was very new and you had the bandwidth to email people. It's beautiful to grow. Thank you guys for your day. Hey, God bless you. I don't got that bandwidth no more. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't even look at my emails like that. Felicia would tell me or Julia keep me in the loop and I just keep it rolling. So yeah, that um, that bandwidth is quickly gone. <laughs> you know, which is why I don't give my number out to everybody. Like if I give you my number, so you can't reach me. You know, I, I don't give my. Felicia tell you a lot of times people have to go to her to get my number. And I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> 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 right. But you have to have the ability to have a calm spirit. Mm -hmm. And having a calm spirit is directly related directly, excuse me, related with how you master and rule over your tongue. Remember we talked about the power of words and I said that the tongue was built for more than just the consumption of food. Mm -hmm. However, if you're unaware of it, you will only utilize it for the consumption of food and it can be a destruction unto you. Mm -hmm. It's like my wife. She is a firebrand. But if that tongue gets set in the wrong direction, it can set about the course of hell. But that very same tongue can set about the course of heaven also. So a lot of times we will practice, like, you know, we just, we just going to just, we got the zip it ministry around here. <laughs> so we may talk amongst each other where it's safe, you know, where it's safe, where you have a safe space to express yourself in the confines of our covenant. But then outside of that, we also understand we practice stewarding our speech because if you don't have the ability to guard your mouth and allow your words to become spare, you don't stand a chance of having a calm spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what the proverb tells us. The proverb directly relates the man who has the ability to control his tongue, the man who has the ability to take his words and make them less. It directly relates that man to the man who has the capacity to have a spirit that is calm. It directly relates to the man who has the ability to suppress his words with the man who has the ability to have a calm spirit. You understand? John, help me out now. I know it's in Proverbs, but I think it's Proverbs 15. right Carl actually uh, Proverbs 17 <clears throat> Proverbs 17 <clears throat> hey God bless you Pat I love you Proverbs 17 and um, scroll down then like to the 20s and see 25s is who coming? Pat. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pat of you. Twenty-seven. Thank you. John's gonna read this for y'all, and then we uh, mm -hmm. gotta give us the grace to wrap up quick. Proverbs chapter seventeen, start in verse twenty-seven. He who has knowledge spares his words, 
So he who has knowledge, what does he do? Spares. He spares his words. <coughs> so the man who speaks much can directly be equated to the man who does not have knowledge. Remember I told you this right here. That's why I said for the most part, the reason I can sit and teach for hours is because I don't spend, spend hours talking. <clears throat> I haven't exhausted the strength of the tongue. I haven't utilized the strength of it towards carnal means. And there's nothing wrong with talking, so that's not what I'm saying. But meaning even me, I'm very, very, very settled. Can someone still have a calm spirit if their soul is fragmented? Yes, because the spirit and the soul are different. Mm. Mm. The spirit is the spirit. The soul is the soul. However, the soul is affected. Excuse me. The soul is affected when it's fragmented by what the spirit can give to it. The measure and capacity in which it can receive. So it's a, it's a yes and a no answer. Go ahead, John. Re read it again for me. He who has knowledge spares his words. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. So in order to have a calm spirit, the first thing you have to do is spare your words. The second thing you have to have understanding. Now this understanding isn't the understanding that's of the carnal mind. Like, well, I understand what you're saying. No, this understanding is the same understanding that is from God. The spirit of <coughs> understanding. So you have to ask God if you want a calm spirit. You in turn have to also ask it for the spirit of understanding. <clears throat> you have to ask God, Father, please give me the spirit of understanding. Because with the spirit of understanding is the addition to sparing your words that gives you the accessibility to be a man who has a calm spirit. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to understand something. Someone being just calm and a calm spirit are two different things. Mm -hmm. Because just because someone is calm nature doesn't mean their soul's not raging. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Just because someone's calm nature doesn't mean their soul's not raging. Mm -hmm. It just can't be seen according to the outward flesh. But a man with eyes to see can understand who is of a calm spirit and who is not. So a lot of times what happens is people get mislabeled because they don't speak much. Mm. So it's like, oh man, what? no. They're not sparing their words, they're just quiet. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. I have a lot I can say in regards to a lot of things. I choose to spare my words, mm -hmm. which is intentional. I choose how I govern my tongue, which is intentional. Remember I taught you about the power words, so I don't always get a chance to do it because I have children, I have a wife, I got we got business, we got life, disciples, we got a lot of stuff, a lot of irons in the fire. But typically before I teach, I, I like to just be quiet. And I don't go away to prepare, I don't go away to like read, I don't go away to like shut myself in to study. Before today, I, me and my wife, we just sat there together and talked. Well, actually I listened. <laughs> You know the whole quiet thing? <laughs> <laughs> and nothing wrong with that, right? Because that's my partner, so I love hearing her voice. But I would just, uh, come talk to me. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'll say. I want to, when you talk and I'll listen. And exactly. He says that how it is when it's like someone snaps finally and they're like oh man he was always so quiet mm -hmm. outwardly he was outwardly he was but <clears throat> typically there's times where when we talk about having a calm spirit before like say when we do the school lab right I'll spend a day with God's grace if my family allows me the, the capacity to and I just won't say anything not even prayer prayer of the mouth my prayer of the heart would be there because I live in meditation, but I'll, I'll spend a day and I won't say anything. Pure silence. And if I really had a sweet, I'll spend a couple of days just quiet. Mm -hmm. Just quiet. 
tuning into the right frequency. Getting all the scrambling frequency signals out of there. Just being settled. Showing you some of the ways that that's why when you, you see me like writing stuff down right before I teach or like asking for things, that's why I do it that way. I'm quiet and settled enough that God can say, hey, teach about this, say this, da 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 boom. That's why I was telling Janika yesterday, I said, you should always, I said, you should always be prepared to teach. There should never not be a time where you don't have a message ready. Not if you, not if you with me. Because <laughs> one message is 10 messages in one. You can take one thing I teach and get 10 things from out of it. Right? But I was telling her about that because the ability to have a calm spirit will have you with the grace to be able to not be scrambled by all the noise and be able to be settled in the midst of everything. Be settled in the midst of everything. So I don't have to prepare in that way. But because I've spent time being calm before God, he and I interactions are what I draw from. You see? So I don't draw from like, oh, well, uh, I got to sit down and I got to do this. And that's good too. It's not bad. It's good. It's mm -hmm. not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I'm just telling you about me personally. Mm -hmm. I choose to exercise sparing words and having understanding because it gives me a calm spirit. And when it allows me to have a calm spirit, that calm spirit in turn allows me to tune into the frequency of God. And then no matter what is happening, I can hear him. You understand? When life is most scrambled and life is most crazy and situation and most dim and most bleak, most people can't hear God because of what's happening. And what's happening has now showed that their spirits aren't calm because even in the midst of turmoil and chaos, your spirit should remain like this because that portion of you comes from God. So because of that, when a man practices sparing his words and he has understanding, he is a man of a calm spirit. So a lot of times I spend time just in silence. It's one of the ways I practice having a calm spirit. Sparing my words. Before I teach, I'll just be quiet. Now, obviously you end up talking and stuff. I had to talk to people. My, my morning starts. <laughs> you see my text message. It just go. It just, my son's right. He said, oh, it doesn't stop. I'm like, yeah. That's just, that's just part of it. So I don't mind that either. And you have to exercise certain disciplines to make yourself a spiritual man. Remember I told you, and I'm not talking about woo-woo spirituality, right? I'm not talking about monks sitting up in a cave. But I'm talking about spirituality, which is rooted in Christ Jesus. Even then, it's a practice. It's a discipline. It's a lifestyle. That makes sense? Yes. It's a discipline. Yes. It's a practice. It's a lifestyle. And because of that, you are solely responsible for whether you have a calm spirit or whether you do not. You are responsible for whether you have a calm spirit or whether you do, whether you do not, because it's a practice. If you choose to practice it, you can have it. If you choose not to practice it, you won't have it. And I can tell you now, a man of a calm spirit is not a man who's happenstance into it by accident. The things of God are never happenstance into that never you just stumble upon them on accident that's just not the way God wired it God is very intentional down to the very fabric and fiber of your being everything is wired with intention every single thing does that make sense yes every single thing so that's one of the ways I'll do it just kind of just restrain the words of the mouth sometimes and not even sometimes police will tell you most times when I'm preparing to teach like like a class and stuff we won't be intimate together now sometimes she wants to fight against that <laughs> right that's what Paul said you know when you when you fast <laughs> when you fast no it's like like what Adam says the woman you gave me Lord <laughs> So, <laughs> she made me do it. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> I'm just making light. But there are times where I'll practice abstinence in the name of preparing myself before God. 
Remember yesterday I taught you, there's bread that's common, there's bread that's holy, and there's bread that is hidden. In order for them to have access to the bread that was holy, he says, do you have men that have kept themselves from women? He asked me, he said, the men that are with you, have they kept themselves from women? Because if not, they can't have access to that bread. It isn't just like a, oh man, I'm not going to do this. No, there's, there's spiritual love. But one day I will teach you about God crap. There's so many moving parts that people don't know about in light of how to access things. I was talking with Kevin the other day, and we were having a very edifying conversation in light of fasting, and I was sharing just some insights with him. And I remember telling him, I said, man, one of the dynamics about God is that you can't pay God for things. But if you know what something costs, you can give him that. So you can't pay for things at your own will. Meaning if something costs $10, you can't go bring a pair of sneakers. The sneakers may be more valuable, but that's not the cost. You have to know what everything costs to have access to. Holy bread, there's a certain price and conduct that has to be given for it. Hidden manna, there's a certain cost and conduct that has to be given for it. Everything, there's a price to pay, but if you don't know what that cost is, you try to have transactions with God and you miss it. So then you spin the wheels and you're steady being declined, declined, declined. And it's not that you have insufficient funds, you have the wrong type of tender. You know, tender being type of type of fund that you're using. You have the wrong type of tender that you're using. God is very much a transactional God. Very much so. But if you don't understand what the cost of something is, you try to bring him the fruit of the ground like Cain rather than bringing him the first fruits of your livestock mm -hmm. like Abel. There was a cost that had to be given for what they were trying to do. One understood it, the other one chose to not do it. So it costs to interact with God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You two, are y'all with me? I know you processed it and writing notes and things. I just want to make sure you guys were. I just want to make sure you guys were good. <laughs> Let's go. What's going on, man? I got. Fair said yes. It costs to interact with God, but you got to know the cost. But if you don't know the cost, you'll steady be trying to. Say, hey, man, I didn't ask for that. that's why being with the right men of God also matters because they can tell you what things cost after they've already paid for it. Mm -hmm. Because they won't let you pay less for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me find a scripture for you then. I'm going to have you read it, John. Y'all give me Psalms 131, please. Read the whole thing? Yeah. This is Psalms 131. A song of a sense yeah. of David. Mm -hmm. Lord, my heart is not haughty nor my eyes lofty neither do i concern myself with great matters nor with things too profound for me surely i have calm and quieted my soul like a winged child with his mother like a winged child is my soul within me O israel hope in the lord from this time forth and forever excellent so he says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. 
Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Sometimes you guys will ask me questions. You hear me say, man, that's, I don't concern myself with that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll hear me say that. Somebody asked me something. John at least hear me. Other people ask me stuff. Man, I don't concern myself with things that are too, too high for me. I don't. And I also don't concern myself with things that are too low for me. I concern myself with the things that are right inside of my purview. Mm-hmm. You understand? Somebody said, man, let us know if you're in Miami again. Probably going to be a while. <laughs> in the situation, uh, read me, read me, um, what, uh, what, somebody's comment popped away before I could catch it. Situation. This says, man, let us know if you're in Miami again, but it was one before there, and it said, um, it, it asked about Abel. Abel. How was he able to know what the cost was? In the situation like Abel, he was able to know what the cost was because Adam taught him. Okay. That's how they knew sacrifice. Adam taught him. That's why God says, Cain, don't you know if you do well, it will be accepted? And he says, Cain, don't you know if you did the right thing, it would have been well with you. Cain knew what the cost was, and he chose to do differently. Mm-hmm. He made a deliberate decision, a deliberate, excuse me, decision to do differently. Mm-hmm. Justin said, that's like when you said, when people be fasting with the wrong attention, so they're basically starving. What did the last part of that question say? For nothing. Starving, starving for nothing. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> you know. Now, obviously, you can still grab God's attention at certain things, but God made it very clear, this is not the fast that I have chosen for you. Mm-hmm. So there's a fast that God chooses, then there's a fast that you choose. And you have to find yourself in the sweet spot of allowing God to be your captain of the ship. Mm-hmm. You got to find the sweet spot of him being the bishop of your soul. You got to find the sweet spot of him being the one that guides you and leads you that he would lead you and guide you with his loving eye. The reason there's a guy is because they know the path. And a lot of times people guide themselves rather than going upon the path that he has led for us. But what if your husband doesn't understand that? Like he is not saved, so he wants to be intimate while fasting would be wrong. No, you, you're, you're intimate with your spouse's sake because of your husband not being saved. Mm-hmm. Paul said, do this while the two of you agree about this. Right. So you have to you have to be in agreement about it. <coughs> and it's a fight that's not worth it. You're not being locked out of a certain level of intimacy with God because you're giving due benevolence at home. Women in the Middle East do it all the time. Mm-hmm. They get slapped upside their heads and beat around and then they still go to church because they're married to spouses who are Muslims. It's, it's very common. Back that thing up and thank God he's not slapping you and going to the house of God. Back that thing up like <laughs> juvenile. <laughs> Child, you might get saved you drop it, right? Hey! Oh, God. hang out with me. He said, ever since you've been going over there, go back to church. (laughs) 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 All right, let's go back to Psalm 131. I'm sorry. Lord, my heart, my heart, is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely, I have calmed and quieted my soul. Surely, I have calmed and quieted my soul. This is something that he did. So for the person to have a calm soul, a quiet spirit, this is an act that you do, not an act that God does for you. He says, I have done this. I have done this. That's the, that's the entire Psalms 131. It's literally only three verses. But it's, I mean, you might as well just make it one chapter with no, like Jude. <laughs> 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 Jesus. 
I don't even know why they did that when they did that like that. So that's Psalms 131 is how I'm calling it. But the quieting of the soul and the calm spirit is something that you have to do. It's a deliberate act of your cooperation. It's a deliberate act of your cooperation. Now, another way that we access the quieted soul is through fasting. It's through fasting. That's why, you know, I said, hey, although you're fasting from this time to this time, after that time, don't go have a bunch of fun. What I'm saying is, if you go have a bunch of fun, your soul is going to cause itself to rise. Mm -hmm. And it won't be quieted. Mm -hmm. Just try it. Be like, hey, man, yeah, let me, uh, <laughs> let me lay down and then go eat some Oreo. Just do, you'll be like, you know what? <laughs> I feel very alive right now. Now, obviously, you got you to gotta kind of get into the rhythm of it, so you can't do it on a day one. I'm talking about get four or five days in there mm -hmm. and then go do that. You'd be like, man, that wasn't even worth it. Mm -hmm. You realize you just disquieted your soul. Mm -hmm. You just discalmed your soul. And this made my mother feel better when I do this. You gotta obey your mother even when you grow. It's a, so the soul influences the spirit. Opposite way. Your question is the answer to your question is the spirit influences the soul. To the measure in which the soul can be influenced is based upon how quiet the soul is. Mm -hmm. The measure that the soul can be influenced is based upon how calm your spirit is. The soul that is unbroken or disquieted, it's very hard to interact with God. Mm -hmm. Because the soul is the intermediary or the middleman between the spirit and the flesh. The physical body is nothing more than a shell. Mm -hmm. Nothing more than a shell. It would do nothing unless it's told to do it. And the only place given commands is the soul. Mm -hmm. The spirit also wants to right the ship and lead the ship, but its leading can only be based upon how deep it has gone into the quiet realm so that the spirit can lead it. Because just like I told you, there's levels, there's levels even into quietness. There's levels even in quietness. So if we were all to be quiet now, you'll hear the light. Just listen to it. You hear? It? So there's like four four things I can hear. All of them got different tones, but they're very similar. You hear? It? Three different tones. If I cut that off, but it's quiet. But if I cut that off, we, re we went into a deeper realm of quietness. And if I cut off again, we go into a deeper realm of quietness. If I shut everything off, we're in a deeper realm of quietness. But in order to do that, it has to be very dark. So there's certain moving parts that we'll talk about at another time in light of a quiet soul. But remember I told you that treasure's hidden in darkness, not in light. There's so many moving parts in light of things that people don't understand and as it relates into the spiritual facets and functions that God has established. I'm not talking about the spiritual world and everyone you know. I'm talking about the framework that God has established. The framework that God has established. Now the reason it's important in regards to having the ability to humble your soul. David said, I humbled my soul with fastings. He knew the way in order to humble his soul was through fasting. Yesenia said, can needing deliverance from spirits of anger or frustration be the reason why it's quiet, be the reason why it's hard to quiet the soul, or does it just need practice? It can be both. There's no cookie cutter answer for it because that could be something that's moving you from the ability to be stilled. Mm -hmm. That could be something that's moving you from the ability to be stilled. I'll probably deal with a lot of those things like 
the plan right now is for when we go when we do Glory and Power in November, I will teach you about the different ranks and realms of all these different things, spirits, demons, unclean. Cause remember they're not all the same. Mm-hmm. And they all function differently. There's certain things that need a body to work. There's certain things that all they have to do is attach themselves near you and they can affect you. Mm-hmm. There's all kind of moving parts. Sometimes I've seen people try to cast devils out of people, so they're calling it out, but the demon is just here. Mm-hmm. So you're calling some out of him, but he's just perched here. And he says, oh, well, they don't see me. Mm-hmm. So there's so many moving parts to this thing. You mean here as in here or here as in the... the Meaning here like sitting on his shoulder. Oh, okay. That's, that's good. Meaning here like just sitting on his shoulder, not here next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a no, I'm, a no, I'm a no-fly zone. <laughs> I, I had someone and they were telling me, they was like, man, um, I, I've, I've been in a time where it's just a rough time with certain things. And they was like... We, we want to pray for you. And I was, she, and they were, they were um, talking about it. And I said, well, you know, what I need is healing. That's what I need. I need God to make my heart whole. Yes. Because there's not the presence of an unclean spirit. And even if you remove the unclean spirit, the soul still has to be mended back together. Yes. So you see what I'm saying? There's so many moving parts into, in light of helping a person. Yes, that's there's so many moving parts in light of helping a person. And sometimes when we default down to what we know, we miss the opportunity because we haven't been quieted. And when we're quieted, we can get the wisdom from God. Mm-hmm. When we're quieted, we can get the revelation from God. When we're quieted, we can get the light from God. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of times when people will call me, I'm dealing with this or this. I say, man, give me a few minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I quiet myself. So that way, in the presence of external noise, internally I'm unmoved. In the presence of external noise, internally I'm unmoved. It doesn't change my emotion, but my spirit is settled. Mm-hmm. You understand? Can the fragmentation of the soul place the spirit in a position that it cannot take control? Absolutely. I would say eight out of every ten men, without even having a fragmented soul, the spirit can't take over. It takes the willingness of the soul to humble itself and yield. And that takes effort upon your part. Mm-hmm. Remember, all these things are with intention. It takes effort on your part to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Without the effort on your part, it doesn't happen. That's why David said, I know how to do this. I'm going to stop putting food in my face. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, there's a direct correlation with the strength of the soul and the food that we consume. Well, mm-hmm. There's a direct correlation. I don't know why I got... When he says, I don't pretend, I don't concern myself things too loftier than me. I don't concern myself with why and how, but I know that there's a direct correlation in light of what we consume and what it does in light of strengthening the soul. Mm-hmm. That makes sense? Yes. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they do not follow. So if you're not hearing the voice of God, it's not because he's not speaking. Mm-hmm. He says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they do not follow. You have to be tuned into the right frequency. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. You have to be tuned into the right frequency. My wife and I, she'll tell you, I was dealing with something as of late, and it was just all this kind of up and down in light of this specific situation. But even through all the emotions of it, I'm very secure in what God has said. Mm-hmm. Very stable in what God has said. And the reason being is with the calm spirit, you can be settled even in the midst of emotion. So it doesn't remove the presence of emotion because we're in the flesh. It doesn't remove the presence of emotion, but what it doesn't do is allow my judgment to be shrouded. So that's when you hear me, man, just give me, let me, let me, let me take a second and get back to you. So I can have clear path of interaction with God clear path of interaction with God and so a lot of times you have to have the ability to dial down into the quiet Mm -hmm. dial down into the quiet and cut the noise you gotta dial down into the quiet good night puppy Mm -hmm. love you you gotta have the ability to brush your teeth you gotta have the ability to dial down into the quiet Mm -hmm. in light of all the external factors in light of all the external factors that's like Job Job said 
The Lord has done this to me. But naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will return. And then he worshiped God on his staff. That's a soul that has been quieted. Now, if you understand Job's life, it didn't take away from the grief that he experienced. That's true. It didn't take away from the sorrow that he experienced. Mm -hmm. It didn't take away from the turmoil that he experienced. Yet, he still was able to be humbled in his soul so that he could worship God. I can tell you now, most people, when life throws its chips down on the table, don't have the ability to worship God. And not like they don't want to worship God. Y'all got to excuse my son. He got one of the two brushes and he loved that thing. So, <laughs> so if you hear it in the background, just um, he's cleaning his teeth before he goes to bed. But Job understood. Job said, naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will return. Blessed be the name of God forever. And he worshiped on his staff. Did it take away his pain? No. Did it take away his sorrow? No. Because the soul is still very much present. We don't need that. You can put that down. The soul is very much present because that is the seat of emotions that's out of the soul. But his spirit was leading the ship. I'm going to worship God. Naked I've came. Naked I will return. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. Find it for me, John. I think that's Job uh, 2 or Job 1. Is it possible to reach that same quietness with worship playing, or does it have to be strictly quiet? Yes. Music is, a deter music is not the determining factor of quietness. I think you grow in understanding when it's appropriate for uh, to have music playing versus when it's not. Mm -hmm. So you notice if I'm, if I'm dealing with casting devils out and spirits and all that stuff, I don't like music. But then if we worship it or we prophesy, I like music. There's just a t there's a time where things are appropriate. When I meditate, and I typically don't have music, right? So it just that's me. But I've also grown to the place of a different level of quietness. So it just depends on the situation and the context. But music doesn't mean quietness, and quietness doesn't mean that there's not noise. Quietness doesn't mean there's not noise. You will find that if you sit in silence. It's only a matter of seconds before things start to rise up. Like, just, just, just sit in silence for a few seconds. And try to clear what we understand is your mind. Clear your mind. not long before you start other things start floating in there what do you think about what floated in there the song from yesterday the song from yesterday right so she said the song from yesterday there is a place I like this song in the presence of my father right so different things float in there but the things that begin to arise are based upon what you fed inside of your soul mm -hmm. so for me the things that arise, and I have, I have questions about Father Abraham. And that's all that kept floating up. I wonder what Father Abraham's doing right now. That's different things. So I'm saying that to say you can have music and it be quiet, and you can be quiet and still feel with noise on the inside. <laughs> so a lot of times people try to be like, oh, just be, just be quiet, right? But then if there's still noise on the inside, you know what I mean? And music can serve a very good purpose because music a lot of times allow you to ride something long enough to, to just tune it out in a sense. So even me, I like music 
I don't need music when I'm prophesying, but in a meeting, I like certain music because I allow my soul to hold on to that music, but my spirit's somewhere else. So my soul grabs hold of this because it likes this, and now it's riding that, but my spirit is not doing the work. So basically what you're saying, even in a calm spirit and being quiet, it will never be quiet in the means of like um, what you just said, like those questions, things that you have before the Lord will arise. Yeah. But it should not be like carnal or fleshy things that mm-hmm. arise by yourself. And then there's a time where you grow into where it's quiet altogether. But I'm just showing you that the facet of what is there is based upon how the work that you have done. Right? So if all you're thinking about is what you suffered and what happened to you, that's what's rising up. You see what I'm saying? All you think about is how they did me or this or mm-hmm. I wanted to or just all that. That's what comes out of you. A good man from the good treasures of his heart bring forth good things. Treasure only gets there if you put it there. That's what you put inside of your treasure, mm-hmm. your treasure box. You understand? Mm-hmm. That's not treasure that you found. That that's not treasure that you went to possess. That's treasure that exists within you. It's in your heart because you put it there, mm-hmm. and that's what happens to spring forth. What spring forth out of the heart is what's already there. So, like Job, you found it. Yes. Read it for me. And he said, "Naked I came from my mother's room, and naked shall I return there." The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken Amen. away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. If Job's soul wasn't quiet, he would have charged God for what he suffered. Mm-hmm. Because Job very much was slighted. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Job very much was slighted. And if his soul wasn't quiet, he would not have had the ability to say, The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forever. He wouldn't have had the capacity to say that. Mm-hmm. As far as we're concerned, Job might never get nothing back after that. <laughs> Satan like, see, I told you. Remember I told you, Satan plays by the, by the rules. He knows the loopholes. He knows the framework. And that's why he says, notice God didn't ask. I mean, Job, Satan didn't ask about Job. God asked about Job. What about Job? Hmm. There's more than meets the eye there. There was a conversation that was happening amongst God and the sons of God that Satan was there present for. This wasn't that Satan was having a conversation with God. God was having a conversation with the sons of God. And Satan came and presented himself there with them. There's more than what people don't even understand the depth of the angelic realm. Now, when it says that. He was there a few verses before that when you read it talks about how they were there and they presented themselves in the presence of the Lord the sons of God and then Satan presented himself and they said where'd you come from oh you know I've been walking to and fro up and down mm. there's different depths inside of the world that we don't understand I've taught you a little bit about it in private but it's a world for a reason oh I've been walking back and forth and I've been walking up and down it's just more moving parts. Last I checked, you can't walk up and down the earth. You see? Mm-hmm. So there's just more moving parts. And then I'll tell you this too. When it says that the sons of God came down, they presented themselves to the Lord. It wasn't that Jehovah God was there and they weren't in heaven either. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people think by default that they showed up in heaven. That's what they think. That By default, they think he showed up in heaven. But consider this. When Moses encounters God at the burning bush, who does he talk to? When Moses encounters God in the burning bush, who does he have a conversation with? It's not the Lord, but it is the Lord. You see what I'm saying? So now I'm showing you without telling you too much what's happening in this conversation with the sons of God presenting themselves to the Lord who they're talking to. Mm-hmm. There's more than what meets the eye. No, it wasn't a seraphim. Mm-hmm. I'll teach you the depths of this one day in private. It wasn't a seraphim, though. 
The sons of God weren't classified as seraphims. They were class of beings, but those beings aren't seraphims. Well, if one day we'll do the school of angels, you'll be like, listen, man, I absolutely know nothing about what I thought I know. <laughs> you'll find out I know nothing about what I thought I know. I gave you a hint the other day when I said that, and then John is called up, and then John says, I bowed down to worship. He says, stand up and do not do that, seeing as though I am your fellow servant of your brethren, the prophets. Mm -hmm. But then one verse before it says that he fell before the angel. Angel just simply means malak, which is a messenger. Mm -hmm. So there's just, there's so many, there's so many things that move us out of this. Is that the same angel that walked with Elijah? No. the morning stars no or being a fire no tell you man there's more trust me trust me there's more than what you understand about that world not even close you can guess all night you're not gonna figure it out I'm a location you have to come here to get it I'm trying to tell you I just want we won't talk about it openly. We can talk about that at another time. <laughs> Why y'all laughing? Oh, the, yeah. Riddle, I, I, I forgot Riddle be this Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I'm not cutting up tonight because we talking about having a calm spirit. <laughs> and Brandon said, "I'm about to meditate on this." Amen. Make sure you get rid of all those other answers that came up because they was all wrong. <laughs> 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 but having a calm spirit will have the give you the grace to endure. <laughs> Job was able to endure based upon the settling of his own soul. Job was able to endure based upon the settling of his own spirit. And then what he said, Job got double for his trouble, as they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's what they say. Job got double for his trouble. Kind of. Job got double of his possessions, but he never got double children. Mm. So they say, oh, Job got double, kind of. Mm. He doubled his possession. He doubled his livestock. He doubled all that was under his hands, but his children, he got the same amount back. Mm. Or did he get double? Mm. Remember, just because you die doesn't mean you die. Mm. Mm. And God's not a liar. He said, I'll give you double. Job ended his life with more children than what he started with. Double. That's because those who are with Christ never truly die. That's how Daniel could understand being thrown into the lion's den. That's how the young men, Hananiah, Ashi, uh, Hananiah Ashi, Mishael, Azariah, they could understand. Or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I try to get him a little more honored than them slave names, you know. <laughs> we, <laughs> like, hey, man, give my boys a little love. But that's how they could endure being in the furnace. You imagine they said, oh, they blessed the king. Oh, king, may you live forever. We'll be cursing the king. These young, oh, king, we can only serve our God, but may you live forever. I told you, I said, we don't truly understand honor. One day, you know, obviously I said it the wrong time, the last one time I said it, but we don't truly understand what it means of it. Oh, king, may you live forever. But see, that's my willingness to, my willingness to say that I'm wrong about something. That's where I'm a little bit different with a lot of people. If I'm wrong, I will say it. Hey, man, I said this to this person. I was wrong for saying that. Oh, I did this. I was wrong for doing it. I, I just lay it out there. Huh. When the enemy comes, he has nothing in me. Yeah. When the enemy comes, he has nothing in me because all the evidence has already been turned over. Mm. So, yeah. But Daniel, he could endure because his soul was quieted. He could endure because his spirit was calm. Mm. Joe could endure because his spirit was calm. Paul could endure because his spirit was calm. Paul, aside, singing hymns and praises unto God while being under the jail cell. They didn't think they were getting out. Mm. You understand? They didn't think they were getting out. 
So your ability to hear God is based upon the same ability that you possess to quiet your own soul, based upon the same ability that you have to calm your own spirit. And that's something that only you can do. That's something that only you can do. I can't do it for you, and God's not going to do it for you. It's something that only you can do. And everybody can hear God when everything's well. Mm-hmm. So when I'm talking about hearing God, I'm not talking about everything well. Everybody can hear God when everything's well. What can you do in the midst of calamity? You understand? Mm-hmm. What can you do in the midst of calamity? I remember being with a friend, and it was a very bad time for them. Because of their, their house, I won't give details, but their entire house was being shaken upside down. And I remember being in the hospital, and then when the doctors come to get information, and everyone's like, oh, they, this is this and this. And I remember being like, hey, I want you to settle your soul. This is what they're going to say. I want you to settle your soul. This is what it's going to be. But I could only hear that because in the midst of all the calamity, my spirit was quiet. You see? But my emotions was hopeful. But if I was overridden by my soul, I would use my hope as though thus saith the Lord. Right. And God said totally different. Mm-hmm. Most times we pray based upon our hopes, not upon what God is saying. Mm-hmm. We see that. I remember when my spiritual father was running this race and he lost it and everyone had a, a word about it, right? They were hopeful. Mm-hmm. But the spirit that has not been quieted can only gather information based upon what the soul allows it to have. You see? Mm-hmm. So if the soul is too hopeful, and not that there's a such thing as too much hope, but if the soul hasn't been broken, only thing that it will allow access to is itself, not the spirit. Mm-hmm. So if the soul says, no, this is what I see, this is what I perceive, this is what I feel. Mm-hmm. But if the spirit is quiet and the spirit is calm, it can say, hey, this is not going to end well, but God's not going to make a full end of us. When the spirit has been quieted, it can look in the midst of turmoil and say, listen, this is not going to end well, but God's not going to make a full end of this. <clears throat> you see? That's what Paul said. He says, brother, I want you to know that this night an angel stood by me and he proclaimed unto me. There were plenty of people on the boat, but he was the only one who saw the angel. That's kind of like when I said, hey, I can see a spirit there, but no, they're dealing, trying to deal with someone on the inside. I'm like, hey, man, you're missing it. <laughs> Just wave your hand and it'll be done. So you understand when you when you see, you see me doing stuff like this is is more than what you just think. <laughs> you understand? Sometimes you talk too much and you could just wave your hand and light can pass over. Mm. So the soul has to be broken to have a calm spirit. The soul doesn't have to be broken to have a calm spirit. However, the soul must be broken if you're ever going to interact with the spirit. Mm. So yes or no. Like the dream you told us about the car accident. Absolutely. I was calm. So I could hear God. Remember what I showed you. Prepare yourself. Yes, Lord. In the midst of all of that. I remember being with my friends. They were going through a rough time. I had to tell them, this is what God is going to do. And it wasn't easy to do that because what I was saying was contrary to what everybody else was saying. But I understood that my spirit was calm. You understand? So hearing God is never about things being easy. You need to be able to hear God when it's not easy. You need to be able to hear God when it's not well. Everybody can hear God when it's good. Yeah, I just perceive, I just see, I just hear. When the rubber hits the road, that's when everybody needs a word from God. That's when you need to be able to stand strong. You understand? So I want you guys to practice a calm spirit. It's something that's done with intention. It's something that's done with purpose. It's not something that you do happenstance. Amen? Mm-hmm. All right, so I love you. Tomorrow, bring that Cat Williams energy. So, you know what happened when I line up, boy, boy. <laughs> you understand what's gonna happen when I hold on, hold on a second, y'all. Hold on, let me. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow.
single 